Micron, uh, I guess, in, in prior years has been seen very much as kind of this barometer for uh, smartphones and PCs, tablets, that sort of thing. But more and more, the story is becoming about AI. Just how much of a story could AI be for a company like Micron versus, say, an NVIDIA? I think at the end of the day, um, AI is going to benefit in, in NVIDIA more than, um, say, Micron. I, I, you certainly need memory for AI, but um, that's not going to be the, the, the primary driver for Micron. Having said that, what we're seeing right now to some extent is, is AI is cannibalizing some other use cases. So if anything, uh, companies are investing in AI servers versus standard servers, and that that's almost a, a headwind for Micron in the short term. As we start to get beyond uh, this, this uptick in AI spend though, um, at some point standard server uh, builds have to normalize. When that happens, um, when you see the consumer come back, AI at that point, it, it doesn't become so much of a, of a cannibalistic or have the cannibalistic impact um, on servers. Rather, you get this additive effect. And so, yes, you need more memory for AI. Um, when we get to 2024, you're going to need more memory for servers. You're going to start to see the consumer come back. You're going to see more memory at smartphones. And I think it's that period that the people are looking forward to right now. All right, so so Matt, let, let's let's take it away from the AI somewhat and back to that consumer that you just mentioned. Smartphones is is is, is and, and and some of the supply demand imbalance in memory chips, smartphones, tablets, and that sort of thing has been has been at the heart of it. What does it tell you about Micron's results about the the dynamic there in, in terms of future, I guess, consumption of new products, smartphones coming out, tablets, that sort of thing. Yeah, so I, I, I think w what you're looking at right now with, with Micron um, lowering their, their, their bit shipments, I, I mean, that tells you that, that right now those, those end markets aren't so healthy. Um, I, I think in, in, uh, it, it, most importantly for Micron, their largest market for DRAM ends up being, being servers. And I think standard servers being built for large cloud service providers that that market in particular is suffering right now. Um, I, again, having said that, I, I, I think that um, those cloud vendors are, are going to spend. Uh, so you'll see that recover in 2024. But I, I think what Micron's results tell you is that that still hasn't happened yet. Um, but what Sanjay was saying about, you know, revenues have dropped, things will get better moving forward. And, and just before we let you go, pricing-wise, with regard to, you mentioned dynamic random access memory and, and their uses. What exactly is going to be the pricing outlook for, for some of these key chips for Micron? Yeah, so the, the pricing outlook's a, a little bit uh, bleak at the moment. What, what really, I think, gets Micron out of this trough is, uh, you, you mentioned AI. AI needs something called high bandwidth memory. Um, we're shifting to DDR5 uh, for servers in particular. Uh, both of those products really only get made on the newest nodes. Um, there's limited capacity right now there. There's not a lot of inventory right now there. So I think when you get towards the end of this year, you start seeing new server platform shipping. You continue to see great momentum around AI. You see more demand for those products. Uh, the memory makers don't have enough capacity. I think that's what really lifts memory pricing starts to lift margins uh, for these companies, and we start to see Micron moving back towards uh, positive earnings again.